back, everybody. We're going to do a quick harvest video here of some of the stuff that I'm harvesting. This is probably about 50% of the varieties I'm growing. There's still quite a few that's still in up to the fruiting stage, but, well, they're fruited, but they're not ripening. So we'll just show you some of the stuff that we're, we're gathering now. This is like my fourth harvest already. Quite a bit of it's already been picked already. This is just basically the last one. I wasn't even going to do a video on this, but we're here, so let's get into it. Uh, we got some Zamoras here. We got Defco. As I'm really big fan of Defco. Um, I had one of these the other day in my um, in my chili and rice, uh, not chili rice, uh, beans and rice. And man, was that hot! These were extraordinarily hot. So I'm a real big fan of these Defco, this Defco variety. Uh, very very hot. It's up there with the Reapers. Uh, we got Cap 501. Now, this is this year, for some reason, this plant is like three years old, but this year, for some reason, it, it, the fruits are coming out much larger than I've ever seen it. Normally, the fruits only come out like, I don't know, something like this. And they never make any seed. I get maybe three or four seeds off of a 10-foot tall plant, and uh, it doesn't make seeds. Uh, it's a capsicum, costioense. But it doesn't make seed. So this is the first year. Maybe I'll actually get some seed out of that. And if I do, I will, um, I'll will i make it available again on the website. We've got some Savinos right there. This is something new. This is called Orange Blob. And uh, it's an interesting variety. Some kind of a, like maybe a bonnet of some type, but real orange version of it. So that's called Orange Blob. we got Chameo there. It's a classic... Uh, Mexican chili using a lot of classic uh, Mexican dishes. We've got poblanos here. This is this is not your atypical poblano you're going to be getting from the supermarkets. Usually the poblanos you're getting in the supermarkets are not they're not real true poblanos. Those are basically uh, mulatto is they're like mulattoes or mulatto islanos. They're a brown ripening type of uh, a poblano if you want to use that term. Uh, they're a different type. It's not that they're better or worse. It's just a different thing. They're a darker green, and then they turn brown when they ripen. This particular Pablanos, they turn red when they ripen. And that's the true form from what I understand. I don't know. I'm not from Mexico, so I don't know if that is the correct form for all Mexican dishes. However, this is the red ripening version of Pablano and not the brown ripening version. We got Max Ike. I got so many of those on that plant outside in the back. It's absolutely mind bending. Uh, we got Siling Laboyu. This is a uh, this variety here is a uh, it's a Filipino wild variety. There's probably about a dozen different variations of this particular pepper that grows wild on the Philippines. Uh, this is just one of them, and. Uh, this is like a medium to large size version of it. There's orange versions like this. Then they change in size as far as being coming more shorter and fatter. And then there's like the real, real tiny variety, which is the variety I'm looking for, which is very, very tiny. It's like maybe an eighth of an inch to a quarter inch big, very tiny. And uh, it, it, it's the original version that escaped the lab in the Philippines that became what this is. Because uh, peppers are not native to the Philippines, but it escaped cultivation or some kind of a lab, and uh, that's where it ended up. We have uh, Bodhi, the regular red version of it. I forgot that's a PI number. Man, that, that variety was so big, it was ridiculous. I mean, the amount of, the, it was a small plant, but the amount of peppers that came off of that was insane. It's my third harvest of this variety with a plate that big. It's insane how many peppers came off of that thing. I believe that is a. Um, I don't think it's a, a bacatum. I don't remember. Uh, over here we have a BTR Scorpion. These are absolutely ferocious. I had one of them the other day. Absolutely ferocious. Uh, sweet Peach Habanero. A lot of people uh, love this particular variety. It's a, it's a habanero variety that generally doesn't have any heat or very low or next to no heat. Uh, we got Pacilio Bajo. That's the last one on the plant. But I did get about four or five of those off the of my plant this year. I think next year I'm going to grow like a dozen varieties of those because I really do like cooking them with beans. Uh, we got Thai Hot. That's just a regular red version of Thai Hot. It's a very small plant. It's almost ornamental, but that's a, a red version of Thai. Uh, Chilipine Phoenix. This is also, this is, is a, it's a Chiltepine, but it's actually an elongated version of it. It's not a round version of Chiltepine. It's actually a, a, an elongated version of it, and that's called Chiltepine Phoenix. We have um, 
We have Bain Strain Peach. Big fan of this particular variety of pepper. I ate one of these the other day as well. Has a nice aromatic smell to it. Very smooth, and uh, it's not. It doesn't. It doesn't have like a strong habanero type of flavor that kind of stays with you all day. Very smooth. Very easy to eat. Uh, Guajillo. We, this is called. Um, this is mini yellow ricotto. I got a ton of these coming off of there. There's nothing's ripening right yet with this one. It's coming in really late, but I got one up there, so we got something to show you. Uh, Leviathan gnarly. I really like this, guys. This is like my third harvest on this one as well. My first harvest was a plate about that big. I probably had about 70 peppers on that thing. They look like this. Absolutely nasty. I had these as well with rice and beans. Oh, my God. I almost couldn't finish it. These are absolutely roasting. Uh, there's a chocolate. This is called the uh, Ch Leviathan chocolate. It's very similar to the, as you can see, uh, to the Leviathan gnarly. You can see they're very similar, but they're not quite the same. Uh, they're a little bit different. I don't mix them up. I keep them the way I get them. Uh, that's called Leviathan chocolate. These are called, um, this is called peach wasp. In my opinion, it's a variation of the Guasino pepper, the caterpillar pepper, or whatever they call it. This looks like very much the same thing, except there's a peach color. Uh, it's very possible that's what it originally was. I don't know. I got my seeds originally from pepper lovers way back in the day. That is the original seed that I got from them, and that's called peach wasp. We have a ornamental over there that's called a just perfect ornamental. Don't know anything about it. Seeds were given to me. Tarrani. This pepper, a lot of people don't know about this one. It's a very rare variety from the Middle East. It actually grows in Tehran, Iran. It's a frutescence. It's the largest frutescence variety I've ever seen in my life. I grow a lot of frutescence varieties. They're all small, like bird peppers, like that. But I've never seen anything frutescence come out of, of like this. This thing's absolutely enormous. Um, this year, I should show you my plant, but this year the plant got to around six feet tall. And the amount of peppers that are coming off it are mind-bending. I mean, there's probably 200 of these size pods literally hanging from the plant right now. Literally this big. This is, this is a frutescence. And they're really good. I should do a pod review on that. If I get time, I'll do it. But yeah, Tarani, if you've never tried those varieties or you don't know anything about it, give that one a go. It's a great variety to, to uh, grow and uh, experience. It's very rare. This is the true form of it. You'll see other people that are offering seed for it. That is not the true form of it. That right there is 100% the true form of Tarani. And I did get those from Pepper Lovers way back in the day. And I still grow that variety today because I actually do love the taste of that particular variety. Um, this is called La Lisa, Lace, Lacia. It's a sweet variety. Uh, these can get quite big. I've had these almost as big as a softball. Uh, they get enormous. Uh, this year they didn't get that big. I didn't really grow it out. This is last year's plant. Didn't want. Did, a lot of the last year's plants didn't want to grow and develop too well. Don't know what's going on. I don't know if it's a weather thing or not. Um, this is Japones. This is this is another one I'm very big fan of. This is a classic for using to make uh, pepper flake. A lot of companies use this to make their flake. Uh, this is the, the base ingredient, is the Japones. I really like the Japones. You can see it's a, it's a, it's like a multi-floor top that comes off the top of this thing. And uh, there could be as many as a dozen peppers that come off of the top of each crown. And uh, it's, incre it's an incredible producer. So I'm a big fan of uh, Japones. I don't know why I grow, because I could just simply buy that by the pound, by the bag, but I like growing it anyway, just to, um, you know, eat them fresh. I do dry these out just like this, and uh, I let them dry in the sun, and uh, I keep them for many years. They stay fresh for many years, even though they're dry. Uh, this is Cap 691. These are already dried out. You can see that they're already dried up on the table. Uh, Cap 691. Um, I think that's called also Red Fire. This right here is just Buccalochias. These are your typical ghost peppers. Uh, I grew a plant this year because I need to update my ghost pepper seed uh, inventory. I'm about two and a half years, probably three years of my ghost peppers now. So what I do is I grow them every two to three years, and then uh, I just replace all the seed. All the old seed gets dumped right into that pile over there. Use tons of plants growing out of that thing. This is called Ahi La, uh, Ayuyo. Uh, this, there's a red and there's a purple version is what that is and nobody really buys the red version but if you go online and you buy the ahi or yuyo from people they usually mix the two varieties together that's why because nobody really buys the red one everybody wants the purple one 
And um, that's why a lot of guys will, when you go online, you buy them, you're going to get red and blue. I separated them. I probably shouldn't have done that, but it's done. It is what it is. So anyway, this is Aji Habanero. Uh, this is like my fourth harvest on this, or third or fourth harvest on this one. I had an absolute pile of these things this year. It's ridiculous. Uh, Roca Pico. Now this is uh, uh, Capsicum Cardiancy. And it does make a brown seed, not black seed, but brown. And um, it, 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 it looks like it's a cross between a pubescence and a, um, uh, what is it called, uh, cardiancy. So it's, it, that's what some people are saying. I, I don't know. It's a strange looking plant. I'll do videos on it later in the year. That is uh, Roca Pica. I got an absolute ton of those coming off of it this year. This is just a few that are ready now. I just needed something to put on the table. Cabaca peach. This is in the Cabaca family of things, but this is nothing like the Cabacas. This thing's like a little mini uh, light bulb, if you will. And um, it's nothing like Cabaca roxa. It's a totally different variety of plant. But that's Cabaca peach, very rare. I really like this variety a lot. I'm going to be growing this next year again because I like it so much. So, yeah, look forward to that one. This is called Purple Reaper. Uh, the Purple Reapers can get very, very purple in direct sunlight. They could get almost black. This one doesn't have any tails this year, but this is a two-year-old plant. And last year, some of the pods did have tails on it. I don't know why this year uh, it didn't want to produce tails, but you, you can see the tiger striping that forms on these varieties like that. Look at the beautiful stripes. And you can get some really great patterns on these varieties here. Purple Reaper right there. These are hot. I did have a half of one of those, and they were absolutely unbelievably hot. And that right here is called Seven Pot Lucy. And uh, as you can see, Seven Pot Lucy is a weird kind of Seven Pot. It's, it doesn't even look like Seven Pot, but this is this is what it looks like. I've done a lot of research online to see if the phenos were correct. And this is what everybody else chose for Seven Pot Lucy. So that's what that is. Clingers. Clingers. Gar uh, Clingers. Florida Grove Pepper. Now, the original clingers for the original uh, Florida Grove is a very large variety. can get up to like, I don't know, uh, four times as long as this. However, you can't get seed for that anymore. I, I contacted the original vendor that was offering the original clingers Florida Grove, and they told me that they haven't been there since their original offering, and um, you can't get seed for that variety anymore. And that's part of the problem. When people get these varieties, they're growing one time and you never see it again. To try to encourage people to keep continue to growing it because one day I'm not going to be around, they're not going to be around, and you'll never be able to get any of these varieties again unless you start growing them, saving seed, and offering them. But nobody wants to do that, so that's why they're disappearing. So this is called the Florida Grove Pepper. This is the Clinger version. This is as close to the Clingers as you're going to get. I'm trying to find out who Walter Clinger or whatever his name is. There's a whole story about the guy. Uh, and where, the, where, these, where this particular large variety grew on his property. I'm trying to see if I can get in touch with him. I'm going to take a plane to Florida if I can, and I'll try to recover some of those seeds and see if we can get that back into circulation. Uh, nobody else is going to do it, so I might as well be the one that does it, but this is as close to Florida clingers as you're going to get. It is a Florida Grove pepper regardless. Okay, so that is that. Rhomboidium. We got tons of rhomboidium this year, guys. Oh, my God. I've been... I've been literally picking these rhomboidiums off my plant like crazy. Uh, they they can get a little bit sweet, but most of the time they are not. We are going to have tons of rhomboidium seed this year, so don't you worry. Over there, we got chocolate douglas. We got the chocolate dogla right there. Isn't that nasty? This is from the original seed I got from like 10 years ago. I still managed to pull up some varieties from that. I'm still growing it. Chocolate dogla. In its raw form, we got Komari Dupar. You know what that is? We got Ahi Cyrell right here. Now, typical Ahi Cyrell has a funny shape to it. If you look at that shape, it's a very funny shape to the Ahi Cyrells and uh, very, very atypical for the fry. It's one way you can tell you got Ahi Cyrell. They grow a very funny way. Almost looks like a knife if you hold it a certain way. It, it kind of got that shape. So that's Ahi Cyrell. This is the real deal right there. Over here, we got Chiltepine Phoenix again. I don't know why I wrote that down twice. Oh, I got a double plate up here. Okay, I didn't realize I did that. It's Chiltepine Phoenix again. This is an interesting variety. This is called Quintisso. This is a Bacanum version of the Quintisso. And um, this variety of, of uh, Quintisso can get really, it can get quirky. I mean, it literally looks like somebody's brain. And it gets corking all the way around it. And they can get really, really gnarly looking. But these are also really good. They're very hot, and uh, they come right off the 
stem, as you can see. <laughs> um, and they look, they can get like a real peach color and they're very soft. If I were to squish that in my hand, it's squish. It's not like the yellow Quintesso. These are very, very soft. And uh, definitely worth a try. These are very massive producer. Once you get this plant to start producing the uh, pods, it'll produce hundreds and hundreds of pods. Yeah, they can get a little bit of purpling on them if they're hit by direct sun. And they're very soft, so they'll squish in your fingers, but not squishy like uh, Tabasco pepper. They're squishy like creamy like. It's a very strange thing. I like them a lot, actually. Uh, Texas rice. Here we go. We got the Texas rice peppers right here. Very, very beautiful pods. Um... Uh, I grow, I'm going to be growing this again uh, next year because I'm going to bring in the plants, small like that, but I'll bring them in and we'll grow it out next year. Over here we got Maruga Yellow. I picked a couple off them already. Uh, not many come off this plant next year. I'm going to have to grow it outdoors, see if we can get that production up a little bit. Over here we got Quintuso behind them there. That's not that. It's not right. Here we go. Uh, some Pajona. We got plenty of seven Pajona this year. I've been mixing that with my rice and beans on a regular basis. We got reapers again this year. I, I replaced the reaper seeds I had because the germination rate really got low on them. So I just bought new reaper seeds. And as you can see, we got reapers. So yes, I will offer reapers again this year. Now these are really small this year. I'm not sure if that's because I wintered it over or what? I, I don't know, but uh, they're kind of on a small side, so hopefully I get seed out of it. Uh, this is called Ahi Norteno. It's another Ahi variety, Ahi Norteno. A lot of, got a lot of pods off it. This plant got to around eight or nine feet tall. I wintered it at seven. It grew up to another another two feet and then leaned over, and it's hanging over like a, like a waterfall with tons of pods like this literally hanging off this thing. This is called Ahi Norteno. Very strange variety. Over there, that's called uh, Bohemian Baron. It's very similar to the Violet Sparkles, but I got these from, um, I forgot where I got these from. Not, not Europe, but somewhere out there. So that's that. Just show you quickly over here. This is uh, VPBUC. I'll have seed for this, hopefully, uh, later this year for this variety. I don't think I have seed for it this year. Over here, we have... Um, uh, what do we got here? Durbin's Claw Red, right there. Durbin's Claw Red. And then over here, we have uh, VP UC Purple. This is a purple version. We'll have seed for this later. Not many pods on here. I do got about four plants of each one of these, so I should have enough to be able to offer some seed. If not, I won't offer it because I need the seed to grow again next year. Okay, so jumping over to this side, we got uh, erotica right here. These are crazy peppers. If you've never seen eroticas, these are absolutely insane. They can grow all kinds of crazy and weird shapes on them. Erotica is the fun one to grow. That's why they named it erotica. All right, so that's your erotica, that's rawia. I'm not sure what else to say about that. It's just what it's called, R-E-W-I-A, I think. It's it's an African variety, I think. I'm not sure. I, I don't know that much about it. Uh, we got your atypical stripey. These are a couple of plants I went it over from last year, so they're pumping out the stripies again this year. So we, we don't have too many of those this year, but uh, all the ones that are still out there, they're all green. They're, they're taking forever to ripen. Um, this, is a, this is an interesting one here. This is called uh, Peach Gum Tiger V1. There's a V1 and a V2. And this is the Peach Gum Tiger V1. And so as you can see, they make these beautiful pockmarks on it. Nice striping tiger shape to it. You got these beautiful calyxes that are nice and creamy. Uh, you can't see the calyxes now because they're drying up. And um, here's a good one. You see the calyx on that, nice and tan like the rest of it. Uh, again, that's Peach Gum Tiger V1. I got V1 and V2. I'm not sure if the V2 is coming out true to form. That one came out true to form. Uh, this is called Santos Orange. There's an orange and a yellow. I only have the orange. I don't know. I, I was given seed for the yellow, but it never came true. Uh, we have uh, Guatemala Chile Tapin. There's a lot of people who love this one. Uh, they really like this Guatemala Chile Tapin. And uh, we got tons and tons of peppers this year off of that one. Habanero, we got the habanero mustard right here. 
Look at that, guys. Look at the size of these things. These are absolutely enormous. You could put one of them in your rice and beans, and you won't need to eat habaneros for a long time after that. We got Nebula. This is the Hidalgo. I forgot what they call it. Hidalgo HDL9, something like that. It's a space chili, basically. And as you can see, there's a chili around the chili. That's the way it grew. We left it that way. And uh, that is called the Nebula version. Diomar is a type of weird kind of elongated type of uh, bikino. So you can see there's a weird type of bikino with that one. Uh, CRX3, this is my F3 on, the, on CR, CRX3. You've seen my CRX2s, and that's CRX3. It's a nice, really hot version. This came, this was a cross between a Charpita and I forgot what else it was crossed with. In the end, I got a bunch of phenos out of it. This is one of them. They tend to get really red on the top and then they hold this nice orange color to it down the stream of it. Then eventually they turn red if you leave them out long enough. But they get a nice mottling orange and red color to them. I really like this variety. I'm going to grow it again next year. If it comes true like this, as you can see here, it gets nice and flat. Like a devil's tongue. And uh, if it grows true again next year, then maybe I'll offer some CRX3s on, uh, on my next year's uh, plan. We got black tapines here. You can see these are beautiful black variety of tapines. Man, these things are really hot. I've eaten a couple of those already. Uh, ricottos, olive ricottos. We got so many of these guys. I literally might have to sell these whole and sell them in a box pepper um, mix. Because there's so many of them on there. I can't possibly process all of them uh, and eat them even. There's just too many of them. Uh, we got this, which is, I, we got we got maybe four or five of these off of that one plant, some big size ones, but I don't have anything left. It's late in the year, so I picked off one of the green ones, and it's whatever that is. It's a Russian variety. We got Daytels. This is a red version of Daytel. I've have been growing the yellow version for a long time, but a red version popped out of it, so I figured I'd show that and offer it. So one of the plants that came up were nice and red, and one of the other plants that came up is a red version, but it's just really small. So I'm not sure. I may not offer that, or maybe I'll give it away as free seed. Don't really know what to do with it yet. Uh, we got Beast. This is called Beast Chili. I don't have too many of these this year. I'm going to winter that plant over. I'm going to cut it down and winter it. But you can see Beast is absolutely nasty. Do you think you're going to eat that? Good luck. <laughs> I don't know if I want to. Uh, right here we have the uh, Isabella Island uh, Red. I'm not sure what Isabella Island is. That might be... The island of the Galapagos. So this might be a habanero variety from the Galapagos, as you can see, right? So Isabella Island, uh, like a habanero, and it grows on Isabella Island. I think that's the Isabella Island from the Galapagos. I don't know offhand. Uh, I didn't do all the research on that. I got to check it. But that is what that is. And they're ripening really quick. I mean, in the sun, they're getting starting to get soft. Costa Rica yellow right there. And as you can see, we got nice version of Costa Rica yellow, Costa Rica red, so I got both Costa Rica red and yellow. This is more of an orange version, but it, it comes out yellow. It's just late in the season, and instead of them ripening uh, yellow like they normally do, they ripen orange. Even most of the yellow varieties you get, if you leave them in the sun long enough or leave them on the plant long enough, they will turn to an orange color eventually. So that's just the way it is with peppers. We have the hornet. Yeah, these are starting to get uh, modeled up. I haven't, they've been sitting on my table for about a week or so. These are the last of the Hornets. Uh, that's it with that one. We got Gator Jigsaw Brown. We got the Gator Jigsaw Brown. Nasty as you're going to get. I do have regular Gator Jigsaw growing, but they're not producing fruit yet. I got may have to winter them and see if uh, they produce fruit next year. So Gator Jigsaw Chocolate. Or brown. Uh, this is called Capsicum Exile. This is a large version of Capsicum Exile. This is generally what if you buy seed from the U.S., this is what you're going to see. This isn't, I have seed for the original uh, Capsicum Exile from Bolivia that I actually got to see directly from there. And um, those, those peppers are very tiny and a plant grows very different from this variety. So most people are used to uh, this variety. So, um, this is what most people are growing in the U.S. is the larger version of Capsicum Exile. I don't know what just happened right there. Did it make an absolute fucking mess? 
And then over here, we got something new we're going to be offering. This is called Yaki. Uh, not the Yaki Blue Fawn, but this is Yaki Peach Fawn. Because it's a peach variation that came out of my seed this year. A peach version. So I figured I'd offer that as a, either a one-time offer. If you guys really like this one, I'll just continue to offer it. So it get really blue like the Yaki Blue Fawn. But when they finish, they finish with a nice peach flavor. So maybe we'll do a review on that later this year. We got some Ahi Fantasies over here. We have uh, Mate here. You guys know should know what Mate is. Uh, what else we got here? We have uh, Brain Strain. This is the Seven Pot Brain. Seven Pots Brain Strain. Over here, Violata. This is a real interesting variety because it produces peppers that are so tiny. Look how tiny that variety is. This has got to be one of the smallest peppers in the world. Violata. It's a... It was a creation from an Italian breeder. I don't remember his name, but he's known for making a lot of really crazy crosses and creations. This is one of them. And uh, I'm really glad to grow this variety. It's so weird. It's so different from all the other ornamental varieties. It's basically a black variety, but it produces these tiny, tiny little peppers. Uh, the King Purple. This is new for this year. Okay. The King Purple. Uh, that's going to be new for this year. I'm going to be uh, maybe do a pod review on it. You can see they're almost ghostly white. Never seen anything like that before. Uh, Uchu cream, which is what this is. I picked all the pods off it already, but um, as you can see, this is what they look like when they're when they're nice and red. Uh, we got the ahi ayuyo purple. We have variegated Pekin. This is another very popular variety. A lot of people really love it on on this one here. Variegated Pekin. The, the, the peppers are variegated too. You, you can see right there, right? They're variegated. They're not variegated. They're red here, but here's one that's uh, that I picked off, and you can see it's variegated. Isn't that strange? Variegated Pekin. Okay, and we also got the Charpitas got mixed in there. I got to separate them. Peach Charpitas. We've got tons of those coming up. Uh, Benny Highlands didn't do that good this year. I'm going to went to the plant over and I'm going to grow it again next year. It's it's a hard variety to grow. It just does, didn't like the climate. I tried it two years. I've been growing it now. Didn't like the first area. Didn't like the second area. And I'm getting some pods off it, but probably not enough to offer this year. And we've got some wild tomatoes. I'll show you them really quick. Got some wild varieties of tomatoes. Over here we got zing. And the zings are crazy, guys. These are insanely hot. You can see the spikes on these things. They're very spiky like a cactus. Insanely hot, guys. Zing. If you don't know about those and you like hot peppers, give that one a go. Uh, we have Hollow's Eve. Now, a lot of people are looking at that and they're like, hey, Hollow's Eve, it's not black. If you put it in the sun, it gets very dark and black. And these were growing in my greenhouse this year. And they don't get as dark. Next year, I'm gonna when I bring it out, you're gonna see how black these can really get. It l literally looks like lava flowing. So you're looking at a really good variety there. That's called Hollow's Eve. Uh, this is called um, Keystone Giant. Didn't do too good with Keystone Giant. I'm not very impressed with it, but it might not be their fault because you can see the slug damage to the calyx. They basically eat the calyx up. And we're gonna end this video very shortly. Uh, right here, you have the red gum naga brain. This is the original version of it. You can see these big red calyxes on here. Beautiful red gum naga brain. That's the uh, original form of it. Again, you got Uchu cream here. Over here, we got Durbin's claw uh, red right there. You got this. I showed you this. This is an HR variety, right? No, I have, I have another variety here that's HR. We got our... Uh, capsicum tavori. Let me see if I'm pointing at that correctly. Can't see because the sun's right in my viewing window here. Okay, so right there, that's capsicum tavori. That is goat pepper, which is a capsicum predomissium, but it's a really hard ver variety to grow. You can't. I, I've been trying to get this thing to produce fruit for about four years now. I can't get it to fruit, or it does fruit and it dies before it can finish fruiting. I've never had any luck with it. We got. Um, uh, is it CAP? No, it's CGN19198, I believe, right there. We're going to bring that over in for the year. It does, this is a hard variety of Eximium to grow. You have to winter that for a couple of years, and then it goes into a fruit 
orgasm, and then you get tons and tons of fruits off it. But you got to grow it for like two or three years. Over here, we got Renkiaki. That's another wild variety that's very, very rare. I believe it's a, a Middle Eastern variety. Uh, we got some... Um, uh, Capsicum Cardiancy, the USDA version. I also have Car Capsicum Cardiancy, which is not the USDA version growing in the greenhouse. Maybe we'll show that to you later in the year. And that is one of my crosses, last but not least, right here. This was a cross of a um, Zion Mutant variety, and I crossed it with something else, and I don't know what I crossed it with because I lost the tag. What is the number on this thing? Let me see here. HR... 14776 and um, I did cross it over and it, it, it just it definitely went through so I don't know it seems like a couple of and the, what I crossed it over with the Zion variety doesn't exhibit any um, variegation in it however even though I crossed it over you can still see some of the some of the leaves on some of these plants there's four plants in here there's three plants in here one of them's actually showing you a variation on the plant a little bit at the lower stems and the other two aren't and the one that's the one that's showing a variegation which is this one here doesn't have any fruit on it but the other two are showing um, this one here is showing you like red and you know cream colored peppers and that one doesn't show any variegation but the purple version is now showing you a little bit of variegation on it. So it's it's weird how the genetics are flowing in and out, but I did not cross this over with anything else. It's strictly the um, Zion, the, the Xenon pepper, which was not variegated, but it's exhibiting variegation in purple pods, just like a lot of the other ones out there. I don't know, I, I have no idea why it's doing that but it's probably going to take a number of years to try to stabilize these mutant varieties because they just keep kicking out all kinds of crazy genetics and uh, they're all very similar to each other they don't seem to be uh, separating so i don't remember what i crossed it with it was something like a jalapeno or whatever but the flower the mother flower was was from the jalapeno or whatever it was jalapeno or cherry pepper or whatever it was the mother plant was was the one that i kept the the pepper from and out of, out of result of that, this is what came out of it. So it did take, the cross did take, and this is what's coming out of it. So I, I don't know. That's It's just weird what it's doing. I don't know why it's doing it, but I don't see any jalapenos or anything coming out of it. So we'll have to just keep our eyes on it, keep our focus on it, and uh, we'll keep keep it going for you know a couple of years, and we'll see if we can get eventually get this variety up to the um, you know the cherry pepper stage, which is ultimately what I'm trying to do. So anyway, guys, that's it. Quick, quick video on uh, my fourth harvest. I don't think I'm going to do a fifth harvest this year. Might do some pod reviews towards the end of the year. And then, uh, you know, we could go over some of the oddball varieties that I got. Look forward to that maybe later on in the year. And then, uh, you know, look, you could get to see some of the varieties I'm going to offer before I actually uh, offer them. So anyway, guys, that's it. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you on the next one. Take care.